What's in the box? So I always wanted to build something really cool with an Arduino or, or, or I think it's Arduino, you know what I mean. But I haven't really tried to do anything with an Arduino, but I think they look really cool. But I mean, if I don't try it, I, I won't learn anything. So I just went ahead and bought one of those Arduino starting kits with all kind of cables and capacitors and whatnot. And since I'm running this YouTube channel, I thought it would be a cool idea to set up a small LCD screen, maybe in a box, um, showing some YouTube statistics. Words are hard. Statistics showing, I don't know, views, maybe subscribers. And maybe we can trigger a, a servo motor. Maybe we can do some beeping, maybe some sounds. I don't know. The possibilities are endless. So this is the card I got. It's the Arduino MKR1010 or 1010 uh, Wi-Fi model. This is my first card, the Arduino Uno, so please just ignore that. I also got a servo, 2x16 character LCD screen, and a tiny, tiny buzzer. What we need to do now, or what I need to do, is to solder everything together so it doesn't fall apart when I try to cram this whole thing into a tiny wooden box. So yeah, let's do that. So I think we're done with the soldering. Now we're gonna zip tie this and, and do some cable management. And when that's done, we're gonna prep the box is gonna go in. So, so I need to take some measurements of the LCD screen and also what else is going there? The servo. I need to measure this, cut some holes in my wooden box, and then we're gonna stuff it all in there. So this hole is for plugging in the power, that's for the, um, the servo motor, and this big one is for the LCD screen. It's not perfect, especially this one, that's gonna be super obvious. This is what you're gonna see on the box, so it's a bit uneven. <sighs> yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but it's... Uh, what did I say in the last video? It's cold as balls. Yeah. That's what it is. So I'm gonna head back inside and I'm gonna um, see if I can hide my crimes with some metallic looking paper or something. I went to the arts and crafts store and, and picked up some, some scrapbooking material. And I mean, you can't really have a DIY video without any kind of scrapbooking or, or paper cutting and, and gluing stuff together. Let's go inside, make this pretty, and I'm gonna see if I can't cram this whole setup into this tiny box. and. Once that's done, it's time for some programming to make it do stuff. So I hope this is wired up correctly. It should be. Yeah, should be.
Okay, so now we're gonna do some coding. First, we wanna get the data from YouTube from their API. So you can sign up for that for from the Google Developer Console. You can just Google that or maybe I put a link somewhere. Uh, I chose to do this in PHP, uh, which is the scripting language I'm most familiar with. Let me show you. So this is my uh, API thing. As you can see, it's very simple. The only thing you need is your channel ID. And here you can put any kind of ID. You can put, I don't know, Mr. Beast or, or PewDiePie if you would like to show some fake stats. Uh, then you need an API key and that is something you're going to get from Google Developer Console. You need to sign up and tell Google what you're going to use the API for and, and stuff like that. And then we need to call the API and, and in PHP this is just a simple, uh, you, you just get this URL where you enter your channel ID and your API key. That's it. The data comes in a, in a JSON kind of package so you need to decode that first. And then I'm starting to build an array with the data I want to published towards my Arduino. So here I'm collecting subs and views primarily from the uh, JSON object we got from, from Google. What I also needed to add, I realized, is the length of each of those two variables. So length one is the length in amount of characters for subs. So length one is the length in number of characters for the subscribers subscriber count, if that makes sense. So when we dive into the whole Arduino programming setup, there's, there's a few things that's really hard to do. And one of those are determining the length of, an, of a number. I can't just go, hey, take this number and, and give me the length of that, because it's just gonna basically give me the number back or give me some other garbage I'm not interested in. So I need to know how many characters one of those numbers consists of in order to be able to position that number correctly on my LCD screen. So what I'm doing, you can see on, on length one, I'm taking the same element, I'm co converting that into a string or making sure that's a string. And then I'm checking the length of that string. That's basically what I do. And I do the same thing for views, as you can see here, length two. So I get the, the length in character for both those two numbers. So I want to pull JSON with, uh, from my Arduino. So I'm just going to encode it back to JSON with JSON encode. And I'm also going to add this little flag, JSON numeric check, which makes sure that the two uh, numbers I'm passing actually are treated as numbers. It's just a safety precaution. Otherwise, I might end up with them being strings. They might end up having those um, uh, quotation marks. That's, that's the word. So yeah, that's it. I'm going to upload this to a web server I have. Okay, my code is uploaded to a web server. So this is all we need. Uh, here you can see subs, 416. Length, three. So that's the length of that number. Uh, an amount of views or channel views, 78,000. And the length of that number is five, because one, two, three, four, five. And that's it. That's all we need for our little Arduino code. So let's jump into the Arduino IDE. So first of all, we need to include a few libraries. As you can see from the comments, it's it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, we need to make some interweb stuff. We need Wi-Fi. We need to handle JSON response. This is for the LCD screen. We need to handle our server motor. And we also have a separate include file for my innermost secrets. Mm -hmm. What could that be? Okay, so it's basically this file containing my Wi-Fi name and uh, my Wi-Fi password. So uh, we're telling the code where we put the buzzer and that's uh, which pin it's connected to on the Arduino. So in my case, it's pin number eight. Uh, adding two variables, um, counting the current amount of subscribers and views. This is gonna be useful later for checking if we have gotten more or hopefully not less subscribers. And the same goes for views. We need to uh, um, name our servo or make an instance of the servo then we need to tell the code or the Arduino where it can find the JSON we just wrote in the other script. So in this case, it's trying to build stuff.com. We need to tell it it's, it's gonna use SSL. And then we're moving on to setting up the Wi-Fi. This is for keeping track of when we did the last request. This is basically just a variable keeping track of, of time. And we're setting the, the interval. So 15,000 means every 15 seconds, we're gonna pull the data. Um, we're not going to do this every second because Google has a limit on their API and we don't want to reach that limit. Then we might end up getting blocked or stuff like that. 15 seconds. I, we could go down to 10 seconds or 8 seconds, I believe, because I think you have 10,000 requests per day you can make. 
I'm, I'm fine with having it every 15 seconds. That's fast enough. Then we move on to the LCD screen. So we basically tell it, hey, this is where the LCD is connected to the Arduino. Then we check, are we connected? No. Then we try to connect to the Wi-Fi. So this line is just to bump the LCD brightness to the maximum. Otherwise, you're not going to see anything. Then we initialize the LCD screen. We set the cursor to 0, 0, which means the top left corner, the first row, the first character. And then we write this. So this is just, it's going to show subs. And this part is the remaining part of that line. So the LCD is a 2x16 screen. So we got 16 characters to play with on each row. So this whole string is in total 16 characters. I just put in the dots there for now as a little hey, I'm loading stuff, uh, kind of thing. That's gonna be replaced by the actual number when we get the data from the server. Then we move to the next line. So the second parameter in the set cursor thing uh, defines which line we're on. And of course it starts with zero. And then when we tell it, hey, go to one, that actually means line number two. We do the same thing, but with views. This line right here is actually a, a little hack. I, this took me a while to figure out, but this tells the servo to stay in this position right before we actually say, hey, we have a servo, please find it on pin number six. So this kind of prevents it from flipping all around as soon as you boot it up. So this first line just checks, hey, is it time for a new update? Has it gone 15 seconds yet? Okay, then let's, let's go ahead. So first we build the path. This is where we can find the data. So first we have the trying to build stuff.com and then I put the code under this kind of subfolder, basically tube stats, I chose to call it. We do the request, see, hey, can we get some data from this URL? And if we can, we store it, that data to a response variable. And you can name it whatever you want. Then since it's a JSON response we got, we need to parse that response with a JSON parser. And here's the tricky stuff. Here's the length I told you about comes in. In order to position our different numbers, the, the views and the subscriptions, we need to take that length and subtract that from the amount of characters available for that line. So in this case, since it's a two by 16 screen, we take 16, we remove the length, and that would give us the position where we wanna print the number itself. So we're gonna use that down here. But first, we need to check, did anything happen? So did we have a change in the number of uh, subscribers or the number of views? In that case, we run the next part of the code. And that's something we're gonna have the first time around because they both set at zero and when you get to data, it's hopefully more than zero. So did we just boot up or did we get a new subscriber? So we're gonna check that. Is the current subscribers set to zero, which is the first time? Then we don't wanna run this because this is kind of our little celebration function. And is the current number of subscribers less than the subscribers we got back. So if we get more subscribers from the API than we have on record in the code, we're gonna go ahead and, and do throw a little celebration. So I'm just quickly gonna jump down here and show you the celebration part. So this is a separate function handling the celebration. So first off, we have a buzzer and we, we're gonna use it. So we play a little tone with the buzzer. We do that for half a second and then we turn it off. And when that's done, we're gonna start waving our little servo around. So we're setting that to angle of 180. We do that for five seconds and then we flip it back to 90 degrees. And that's kind of the orientation I put it in right now. You can put it in whatever orientation you want, but then you need to change these numbers. Here is the position one for the first line. So we position our cursor where we wanna print the number we got back from the API call. So the first line, first line, first position we calculated earlier, we print the subs. Same for the line number two, we print the views. And then since we're gonna keep track on the current amount of subscribers and views, we're gonna store that to two different variables as we declared in the, in the start of the code. And lastly, we're just gonna give it a new timestamp telling it, hey, we just did a new request, so this is the timestamp for that, and uh, you can use that to calculate when next 15 seconds has passed, you can do it again. I'm gonna go ahead and upload this to my Arduino, and let's see what happens. Hopefully it works. Okay, so we got some text on the screen, that's good. Now we're just waiting for it to pull some data from the API. There we go. So 416 subscribers and 78,000 uh, views. Let's see what happens when we subscribe to the channel from Roger's account. As you can see, 416 subscribers, and I'm gonna say thank you for that. That's really, I'm, I'm flattered that so many people wanna watch this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click subscribe 
and then we're gonna check out what happens on the Arduino or our little magic box. Boom. <laughs> That's perfect. So this works really well. I hope you like this little project and if you want to do one yourself you can find all the code and schematics on my website. I'm going to put the link down below. That's it. Check out this thing next and as you saw I left a lot of room for more subscribers so if you haven't already consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.